Ryan Stagg is one of our uh, fourth year medical students from the University of Utah. Um, and I've worked a lot with Ryan both in neuro-ophthalmology clinic and outside of clinic. He, he was the, uh, I don't know what the title is, but he was the student coordinator for the Fourth Street Clinic for all the volunteers there. Does a tremendous amount of work for that, and, uh, and it's been my pleasure working with him, so um, welcome to Clinic. Thanks for the introduction, Grant. Um, as Grant said, I'm a fourth year medical student here at the University of Utah. In June, I spent two weeks rotating in the neuro-ophthalmology clinic, and this was a great experience for me because I felt like every most of the patients we saw in the neuro-ophthalmology clinic were kind of a diagnostic puzzle with multiple pieces fitting together to give the final diagnosis. And the patient I'm presenting today is an example of that. Uh, the patient was a 36-year-old right-handed male who was being evaluated for vision loss. He'd had a traumatic brain injury in March of this year, and associated with that, he suffered multiple facial and orbital fractures. While in the hospital, he was treated with bif bifrontal craniotomy, cranialization of the frontal sinuses, placement of a lumbar drain, and repair of the facial fractures. Also while in the hospital, he's, he had s the symptoms he had included, he had mild cognitive dysfunction, right-sided weakness, diabetes insipidus, and a sixth ner nerve palsy. He also complained of visual disturbances. These visual disturbances were, were complicated and were very difficult for him to describe, both because of their complex nature and because of his, his cognitive impairment. But he described them as a field cut. And when asked, when questioned further about this, he said that he was only able to see the right half of objects, but he also said that with the left eye, he was only able to see to the right, and with the right eye, he was only able to see to the left. Additionally, he complained of double vision that he only noticed with near vision. After discharge from the hospital, he spent some time in rehab, and then he also, he also had meningitis in April of this year, which was, tr which was treated. His ocular history was non-contributory, and his neurological history, prior to, prior to this event, he had had no neurological problems, and his, he was previously healthy. On physical exam, his vis visual acuity was, was decreased in the right eye, was normal in the left, his pressures were normal, his pupils were equal, and he had no APD. His color vision with the Ishihara test was within normal limits, but it showed an interesting finding. He would only comment on the right half of every number. So for example, what he called a three was actually an eight. He didn't, he didn't have any stereo vision. He was unable to see the fly in 3D. And his fields of confrontation were difficult to interpret because of problems with fixation. He had no proptosis. His, extra, his, uh, his right eye had minus four abduction, and he was esotropic in primary gazing in all directions. However, it was, it was impossible to, me to accurately measure his esotropia because of problems with fixation. It was difficult to tell where he was fixating, and, and he would switch. Um, at this point, we decided to do visual field testing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> his slit lamp exam was normal, and he had some bilateral optic nerve pallor. His neurolog neurological exam was only significant for uh, some cognitive slowing. So the field exam, his Humphrey visual field so showed a very clear bitemporal hemianopsia, which was supported by the Goldman visual field. We ordered an MRI, which showed disruption of the optic chiasm. Now, it's, it's difficult to, to capture in a single image to show the disruption of the optic chiasm. But this was decided to be the best image that, that shows that disruption. Here's a second image supporting that. And this image is also interesting because it shows disruption of the pituitary stalk, which goes along with the diabetes insipidus that the patient had been diagnosed, diagnosed with. And so at this point, as a medical student, I felt a little overwhelmed with the patient because he had multiple neuro neuro-ophthalmologic problems they were fitting together, and I was also having a hard time understanding his, his visual fi field problems, his, his visual disturbance that he described as a field cut. And I found it was useful for me to break it down into each individual diagnosis and then see how those fit together. So first diagnosis, we know he had a right six nerve palsy. We also knew that he had bitemporal hemianopsia as shown by the visual field testing, and the MRI showed that that was secondary to an optic chiasm injury. And then the third diagnosis, from those is the hemi-filled slide uh, that explains his, his visual disturbances. So w I'm going to talk a little bit more about each of these diagnoses. Diagnosis number one was the six nerve palsy. Six nerve palsy is the most frequent isolated ocular motor palsy, and it results in impaired abduction and also esotropia. Differential diagnosis for causes of this in our patient include traumatic injury, could have been surgical injury, had some significant surgeries, 
done in that area. He also had intracranial hypotension that was shown by a lumbar puncture. And it could also have been caused by inflammation from a chronic or recovering meningitis that was also shown by lumbar puncture. Uh, we expect gradual improvement with this six nerve palsy. Diagnosis number two is the bitemporal hemianoxia. Here I have, I have a diagram showing the uh, normal, normal visual fields in a patient with their representation on the retina, the optic nerve, chiasm, and optic tract. In bitemporal hemianoxia, there's typically a lesion to the optic chiasm. And what happens with this is the nasal retina of each eye is, l is lost, and that results in the loss of the visual field on the same side of that eye. So, for example, in the, in the right eye, with an optic, with a optic chiasm lesion, you'd lose the nasal retina on the right eye, which would correspond to the right visual hemifield of the right eye. And the right, right eye still maintains the left visual hemifield. And with the optic chiasm, this happens in both eyes. So the patient has, two vi has both visual hemifields, but only monocular representation in each visual hemifield. Also, along with bitemporal hemianopsia, our patient had a diabetes insipidus. I found a case series of 19 patients with traumatic chiasmal injury, and seven of those had also had diabetes insipidus, which makes sense with our understanding of the anatomy due to pituitary stalk in close proximity with the optic chiasm. So diagnosis number three is the hemifield slide, or explaining the, the complex visual disturbance that the patient was describing. Here I have a diagram of a, of a patient with a optic chiasm injury causing bitemporal hemianopsia. But you'll recall our, our patient also had the six nerve palsy, which results in esotropia of the right eye. And with that esotropia, as the right eye moves inward, it shifts the, shifts the left visual field laterally. So another diagram showing this, here's, here's a normal visual field with the esotropia and the monocular representation in each visual hemifield that splits the, splits the two fields, resulting in a blind area down the center of the patient's vision. Uh, Difficult to understand, also you can see difficult for the patient to explain exactly, exactly what was going on as he'd switch fixation points. So hemi definition of hemifield slide is horizontal or vertical deviation of images in the visual hemifields in patients with bitemporal hemianopsia. This occurs because each visual hemifield is monocular, and, so there, and there are no areas of overlap between the visual half fields. This makes it difficult for the brain to maintain to have linkage to maintain juxtaposition of the two visual half fields and then you can split. So in our patient, this was caused by the, by the six nerve palsy. This can also happen just as a manifestation of aphoria when the brain loses, loses the, the linkage to maintain that juxtaposition. So hemifield slide can result, can cause three different things and I found it easiest for me to understand this using my hand, using my right hand to represent the vision coming from my right eye, which is in the left visual hemifield and then the left hand represent the vision coming from the left eye, which is in the right visual hemifield. You can see with exo deviation, the two fields begin to overlap and the patient complains of double vision. With a hyper deviation, the images slide next to each other. And then with an eso deviation, which is what our patient had, the two visual fields split and there's this, this strip of where the patient can't see down the middle. So in conclusion, this is an uncommon phenomenon, but I found it very interesting because I, it illustrates the functional anatomy and how they all play together. So to understand this patient, I had to understand six nerve palsy resulting in esotropia, and then with the visual, with the monocular visual hemifields from the bitemporal hemianopsia, how that played together. Uh, this also showed me the importance of, of, look, of putting the entire picture together. Sometimes it's tempting to focus in on a single diagnosis, but a lot of times those diagnosis, diagnoses play together to explain the patient's symptoms. Um, Thank you for your time. I'll take any questions now. So, so that's a good question. It'll, for one thing, I think it's difficult for him to recover from the esotropia because he doesn't have his his brain pulling the images, holding the image, pulling the images together because he doesn't have any any overlap or linkage between the two fields. Also, um, so we, we asked him to do the temporal cortex and, and practice pulling the images together. Uh, also, I think as, as his esotropy improves, he'll probably start to notice some double vision, so it might be fluctuating for him. So Any other things with that?
Thank you.